London Uncovered. As we are moving on to a new episode, and today we are talking about facing your fears. Yes, everyone is afraid of something, for fear is a natural, powerful, and a primitive human emotion. They say we are born with two fears, the fear of falling and the fear of noises. All other fears are either learnt or self-taught. No wonder it is seen that one man's fear is another man's passion. Fear is programmed in a nervous system and it works instinctively. It gives us the survival instincts we need to keep ourselves safe. Fear is the source of 90% of the lack of progress and personal development in the lives of millions of gifted, talented and resourceful individuals. Studies show that when we feel fear, we can experience three types of symptoms. One, unhelpful thoughts, such as something bad will happen. Two, physical symptoms, such as a rapid heartbeat, faster breathing, sweating and high blood pressure. And three, changes in our behavior. Some top fears that hold people back in life are fear of change, fear of loneliness, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of uncertainty, fear of getting hurt, fear of being just, fear of inadequacy, and fear of loss of freedom, etc. Franklin Roosevelt rightly said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. That is why, whatever the source of our fear is, if we let it overpower us, it'll become like a prison without walls. It can damage us mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, and occupationally. Some use the acronym F-E-A-R as false evidence appearing real. So what can we do about it? It is said that courage is not the absence of fear, but facing your fears, even though afraid. Here are some ways to fight our fears. Take time out, breathe slowly and deeply. Face your fears boldly and to soon start to fade. Feed your mind with faith and the fear will subside. Challenge fearful thoughts. Don't try to be perfect. Visualize a happy place where you feel calm and relaxed. Talk about it to a partner, friend, family member, or the Samaritans. And in the words of Mary Curie, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. And now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. And of course, it takes more courage to live than to die. So let's go and see what people have to say about it. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Sanjay. Good morning, everyone. Tell us, what does fear mean to you? This is actually quite hard for me to talk about because I'm actually a very fearful person um, in my um, in myself. Um, I had a slightly difficult upbringing, um, and um, I I had a, as a child I was frightened a lot. Let's put it that way. Um, and that when that happens, the fear tends to stay inside you quite strongly. Um, so fear for me is the feeling of um, that somebody is about to say you're terrible or that 
whenever you're going to go into a meeting, you think that the meeting is going to turn around and you're going to be sacked straight away, or it's a kind of generalised feeling that very soon the world is just going to collapse um, and that everything you've worked for will just disappear in smoke. So it's related to the feeling of instability and of um, generally that somebody somewhere is very, very angry with you and you're going to be in big trouble soon. So how do you deal with your fears? Well, for me, the opposite of fear um, is not bravery or courage or any of those things. The opposite of fear is faith. Um, and faith and trust um, is really the core of it for me. Um, if you... I pray a lot. That's what I do. And when I pray, um, I find that I have faith in God, but also that God has faith in me. As a Christian, I believe that Jesus died for me, and that is God's way of saying, I want you to be on my side. And if that's the case, then fundamentally, the person who owns the universe, the person who's in charge of the apocalypse and all of that, um, fundamentally, um, I'm safe. So I just spend a lot of time praying, and as I do that, the fear generally kind of uncurls itself and un unworks itself. The other thing I find that happens when, when that happens is that I stop automatically assuming that other people are about to turn on me and be very angry with me and I start being able to be more compassionate for them, uh, to feel more for them. What message would you give to the world, Peter? I would say fear is the thing that makes you either freeze or run away fight or flight as they say it um, but um, there are many many other ways to deal with fear than fighting or flighting um, a much better way to deal with fear is to recognize what you're frightened of and to try building relationships that don't run on fear build trust not fear Peter that was brilliant thank you very much <laughs> all right good morning Jamie morning Sanjay tell us what does fear mean to you Fear? What does fear mean to me? Fear is... I think so much of fear is uh, about um, the unknown. Fear is not so much um, the things that you face that you can't deal with. Because some, somehow you always have the strength when you're actually in a situation to deal with that situation. It's the wondering about it beforehand. Like um, in World War I, where they'd be in the trenches the night before they knew they were going over the top. It was the fear of the waiting, the not knowing what was coming. Once you're in the battle, you kind of get on with it and you kind of deal with it and adrenaline kicks in and all of that sort of thing. It's the waiting beforehand, the not knowing, the ignorance, I suppose. I think ignorance breeds fear and you certainly see that I think of racism when people are, or, or in any way xenophobic, where they, they don't like other cultures, they don't like other countries, they don't like other religions, is because they're ignorant of what those people are like, what their culture is like. The moment they get to know someone personally from another culture, another religion, that ignorance goes and then the fear goes as well. That's a great way of facing your fears. Deal with the ignorance. Get to know someone that is from a different culture, is from a different, completely different worldview to yours. And you'll see your fear of them just melt away. So how does one deal with their personal fears? Personal fears, first of all, everybody has them. Don't let someone, maybe they're wearing this, don't let them say to you, oh, I don't have any fears, I don't have any worries not true I know I do but I think the best way of dealing with them is by bringing them before God who cares about every single thing that we care about the Bible says perfect love casts out all fear the way to receive perfect love is to thank Jesus for his sacrifice on the cross for you and me to come into a personal relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ the Son and then the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in your heart and then you know the love of God deep inside not as some sort of religious construct but as a living breathing relationship inside you and that's when fear starts to melt away 
What message would you give to the world, Jamie? Pray. Talk to God. Prayer is just simply talking to God and you can do that today. Doesn't matter if you've never been in a church before. It doesn't matter if you say, I'm not sure I even believe. Just talk to God. And tell him your fears and open your heart to his love. Jimmy, that was touching. Thank you once again. Thanks, Sanjay. Good morning, Alan. Morning, Sanjay. Tell us, what does fear mean to you? Well, fear is a strange thing. They say that we're, everyone is born with three types of fears, spiders, snakes, and the dark. I'll leave you to work out which one of those I'm fearful of. How does one face their fears? It's mainly, like many things, in the mind. I mean, for example, I knew someone who was terrified of spiders, really fearful of them. And I said, how did you find that out? He said, I looked it up on the web. What message would you give to the world? If at all possible, try to confront your fears. But at the end of it, try not to fear. Just be glad we're here. Alan, as always, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Chris. Morning. Tell us, what does fear mean to you? Fear, I mean, I mean, fear can um, take so many different forms. You could be you have a fear of the future. Um, you could have a, you know, a fear of spiders, fear of rats, fear of snakes. Um, there's a whole many of different things um, that fear, you know, can uh, take. Like sort of fear of getting a new job, or fear of losing security, and you know, fear of ha rising house bills. Uh, fear takes many different forms altogether, really. So how do you deal with your fears? Um, well, the quickest thing is, is, is to say, well, you confront them. You confront them head on and everything like that. Um, but another way is, is to sort of, you know, if you have a fear of spiders, stay away from spiders, that sort of thing. Um, but usually, sometimes the best idea is to, um, is to confront them head on. You know, when I was when I was young, there was a big slide that when I was on holiday, I was fear I had fear that you know I'm, I'm going to die because that's a go down it. Um, but after you've done it, you feel re you, know, you know you feel relieved and everything like that. And you sometimes you just got to conquer it head on and do it. What message would you give to the world, Chris? Um, um, again, as I said, if you do have fear or anything like that, or fear of of uh, taking a project head on, or fear of changing a job, or fear of, um, you know, um, buying a house, or anything like that. It's best to do it head on, and um, just give it all your best. Chris, as always, a pleasure. All right, no problem. Thank you. No problem. Good morning, Brett. Good morning. Tell us, what does fear mean to you? Well, fear is the natural reaction for when you do not in control, when you want, yeah, when something is dangerous to yourself or you feel it's going to be dangerous. Um, like waiting for the parachute to open after jumping out of a perfectly good aeroplane. You never know what's going to happen. It's, uh, you know, you're waiting there and you're thinking, oh God, you know, is it going to work? But uh, it's a fear that's 
you know, you're not in control of anything. It's, you know, it's in the God's hands. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's fear. So how does one deal with fear? Well, if it's a really bad fear, and you know, I would go and get some help. I would check with various people, you know, psychiatrists or something. Like actually embrace your fears, take your fears on and uh, get some help to deal with it. Or step away from your fear and uh, see if that can help ease your, ease your fear. What message would you give to the world? I would say stay safe, take care and be good. Brett, as always, you're powerful. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Sanjay. Tell us, what does fear mean to you? Fear is uh, it's a negative emotion. It's, it's, a, it's a, an emotion you, that you feel when you're a lot of time when you're threatened and uh, it's related to things like dread. So I think you, you, uh, dread is, is, a, is a sensation that leads to fear, fear because you, you feel your body body's sort of shutting down sometimes when you're afraid of something. Um, and um, it's it's one of these emotions that everybody can relate to. Um, it's it, it grips your body, it grips your whole body. So it, you almost shut down when you're afraid. So I think that's what you associate fear with something that that scares you so much that you're afraid to actually do anything a lot of the time, and you're slow to react as a result. So how do you deal with your fears? Um, when, when you're afraid, you, you, you know the sensation, so, uh, so you, can react, um, you can react to it sometimes. So I think, I think you get afraid for other people as well. So for example, I, I've been walking along the street and I've seen somebody nearly get hit by a car. I've been afraid for them. Um, so you know, I don't know what that person's felt or, or whether they even realize that they're in danger. So it's something that you, you can manage to an extent because if you're afraid for your life, for example, um, you, you know, you can, you can act to almost you know, pre prevent uh, harm being done to yourself. So it's something that is manageable in certain circumstances, but uh, you know, like I say, it, it kind of shuts your body down as well. So some people can react and some people can't, and that can be difference between life and death sometimes and it's just sometimes it's just a toss of a coin what message would you give to the world um in, re in relation to fear um being afraid it's not a sign of weakness it's just your body reacting to a si to a situation sometimes that's out of your control so just got to try and um handle your fear as much as you can um to the best of your ability tom thanks for sharing once again you're welcome sanjay As we come to the end of this episode and we've been talking about facing your fears and yes we can see that fear is the enemy of success large rewards only result from taking large risks if you're ruled by fear we'll never take enough risk and never achieve the success we deserve 
Here are four ideas given by an expert worth pondering. One, value courage over security. To conquer fear, you must consciously dethrone security and replace it with the active virtue of courage. Differentiate between fear and prudence. Most fears are irrational and unreasonable. Prudence is a good thing. Just make sure you aren't pretending to be prudent. Three, treat fear as a call of action. And that means take action right now. Call that person, write that email, create a business plan, do it now. Four, reframe fear into excitement. Tune it to the aspect of fear that really is fun-like. The last time you rode a roller coaster, something wonderful happened. If we have the courage to take action, as Nelson Mandela put it, the brave man is not, he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear.